Okay, so the next one is uh, by Atanas, and he will be talking to us about environmentally sustainable AI via PowerWare batch scheduling. Thank you. Thank you very much. I uh, hope everybody hears me. Uh, yeah, my name is Atanas Atanasov. Today I'm going to present a teaser of a joint work uh, with uh, Daniel Wilson and Christopher Katapuro uh, from, from the Boston University. Uh, and I'm from Intel. Um, so the work is about sustainable AI through power aware batch scattering. Uh, actually, I'm based in Europe, and uh, as some of you might know, uh, a big issue what we have in Europe are the power costs, which explodes. And the first kind of indication why that's a problem, if we look also on AI workloads, it, this becomes quite interesting. So nowadays, in 2023, there was a, a report from Schneider Electric about the power consumption, what we have today in the data center. So we see around 54 gigawatts of power consumed in the data center, and around 8% actually going in AI workloads. Uh, projecting out to 2028, this will increase. So we will see maybe 15 to 20% going to, to AI workloads uh, in terms of power consumption. So we speak about 20 gigawatt. Uh, and uh, yeah, um, so that's quite a lot. And in this talk, we are focusing on AI training <clears throat> as this is a very energy um, uh, in, in intensive workload, very compute intensive workload. So it's the one which consumes a lot of power uh, out of those data centers. Um, actually, the, the workload is classical HPC workload, so a lot of the techniques which we saw in, and applied in, in HPC code also here. <clears throat> Let's look a little bit deeper. Um, so uh, AI workloads also can behave very interestingly. So there are such kind of curves uh, describing basically how an AI workload um, can uh, behave if you uh, play with power cap. Basically, if you run the workload with less power, so you will get a slowdown or in certain conditions. But the interesting message here, that those slowdowns can be described with those nonlinear curves. And you can do some optimizations, basically, in your data center. Um, so we thought about putting that in a batch scheduling framework. And usually, uh, what we could see in a batch scheduling framework, you have the admin view where an admin wants to prescribe a global cluster power limit, and then you have the user who can ask for a certain power limit for his job or a slowdown. So let's say uh, the user is okay with 10% slowdown, he can specify that, and basically the job of the uh, queuing mechanism is to fulfill these conditions. So we propose an architecture where we have a daemon set running our kind of power, uh, power wear service, we, we call it GOPM service, which can speak with uh, modern GPUs through specific APIs to do power tuning. <clears throat> and additionally, we have jobs uh, which are specifying uh, batch jobs for AI workloads. The batch job consists of two containers. We have a side container, uh, which issues a, a, a message to our GOPM service with the power cap and the actual application. And then on the side, we have uh, the present, previously presented framework Q, uh, basically to do the batch scattering in Kubernetes. We have the MPI operator to run uh, MPI together with this kind of parallel training jobs. So we are able to configure power limits on the cluster level uh, through, through the Q uh, configuration mechanisms. Uh, we can do sweeps of jobs, uh, which allows us to build a model, uh, a power model for, for a specific workload, and then a user can select, uh, let's say, a workload slowdown and execute the job based on that parameter. This is a little bit in a cartoon how this can look like. So you can have a queue where a user submits three jobs, each with different power cap, uh, 1,500, 1,000, 2,000, and basically, the, the admin configured the queue, the, the cluster, to be limited to five kilowatt. So a four job will get, uh, uh, will be suspended 
until, until uh, a job finishes and we have enough power to execute that, that job. Right, so as closing remarks, uh, we developed a, a, a new approach for power capping uh, of AI workloads in, in Kubernetes. Uh, this is very simply integrated in, in the Q batch frame, framework. We use a new feature of Kubernetes 1.28, uh, the init container sidecars, which allows us basically to do prolog and epilog scripts uh, to configure power caps for the nodes. And if you're interested to learn more about the full approach, uh, come and see us on Thursday from 11 a.m., where we will have a, a 30 minutes presentation about that. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, again, we have a time for one question. There you go. While we switch laptops, I would suggest that we start switching, though, just to speed up. But uh, go ahead. Yeah, so can you hear me? Yeah, just a quick question. In a world where resources are scarce, say, in, in your particular scenario, they're obviously running a training job and they're running that on GPUs, you know, given the DCGM. Might another way of looking at this be asking users to uh, maybe the flops requirement or something like that? So if you lower the power, you, you, you still hold on to those resources that maybe someone else could have landed on. I'm just wondering, in another spin, if you asked for the the flops or something like that, then you could maybe place them on a different GPU and then hold that GPU for someone that needs more. Just as a thought, only because you know, while power is scarce, GPUs are scarce as well now. So I'm just right. wondering how you unblock that. Just a quick question. I was thinking maybe there was previously a concept uh, uh, presented in Q about sharing between different queues. Uh, there, there was this concept for cohorts where you could do actually stealing. Uh, you can steal power from another cohort or steal flops from another cohort. It's maybe quite interesting to combine yeah, the, yeah. the two words. Okay. Yeah. All right, thanks a lot. Thank you. Awesome. Let's thank Athens again.